recall last time we ran the example knowledge flow template that built two different classifiers in the Spark environment, a naive Bayes classifier and a JRIC classifier. But we found that it did something different with the JRIC classifier than it did with naive Bayes. It actually ended up building four separate JRIC classifiers and wrapping them up in a voted ensemble. In this lesson, we'll take a closer look at exactly what happened there and the reasons for why there is a difference between the naive Bayes example and the JRIP example. So let's get started. Okay, here is that knowledge flow template we ran last time. And if we open up the text viewer, we can refresh our memories as to what the results look like. So at the top, we had the naive Bayes classifier on our hypothyroid data set. And we ended up with one model, as we expected. The second classifier that ran in this example was JRIP. And as we can see from the results, we ended up with four sets of JRIP rules, and that these were combined in a voted meta classifier. So the question was, why did this happen? Let's take a closer look at it and I'll attempt to explain. Okay, so here is a slide that attempts to describe how the processing occurs in Spark for our classifier job. So on the left-hand side, we have the ARF header Spark job, which initially loads the data into main memory for us. It loads the CSV data and creates one of Spark's resilient distributed data sets with a number of splits or partitions, as they're called at Spark. Each partition is processed by a, a worker out on the cluster, or in our case, by a CPU core on our, our desktop machine. The map tasks process these partitions and create models, or to be more precise, they create partial models. So in the case of naive Bayes, uh, the algorithm is fairly simple, and the model is comprised of a number of probability estimators, all of which can be computed incrementally and additively. So when it comes to combining these probability estimators, we can simply add together their statistics and we end up with one final model which is identical to that that we would get if we ran naive base sequentially on, a, on the data set on our desktop. In the case of other types of classifiers and uh, tree learners and rule learners like JRIP are an example of that, it's somewhat more difficult to try and aggregate these partial models into one final model, which would be the same as if you were to run sequentially. So in that case, Weka takes the easy route of taking the, the partial models or the, or, the, or the smaller models, which are learned on the splits of the data, and combining them by simply making a voted ensemble out of them. OK, we're nearly finished with this example. But before we leave, there are a couple more aspects to touch on. So one is output. We've seen some output in the text viewer here in the knowledge flow, but I mentioned earlier that uh, the jobs in distributed Weka also store output on the file system. This can be our local file system, or if we're using Hadoop and Hadoop's distributed file system, it could be stored in HDFS. So anyway, if we take a look in the source of the data here, our, our header Spark job, recall that we saw we had some setup for our input files and also our output directory down here. So this is where the jobs will store their output. Let's take a look at that on the file system. So if I find my home directory, then I can see that directory that was specified in the configuration there, Spark output. If we go into that directory, we can see a couple of subfolders. So one is where the ARF header was stored by the ARF header job. We can look in there and we can see hypo.arf. And if we go back out and look in this model directory, we can see the uh, models that were created by distributed Weka. So we have one for uh, Nanae Bayes and one for the voted JRIP model. Okay. The other thing we haven't mentioned is this job in the middle here called the randomly shuffled data spark job. So what does this do? 
Well, as the name suggests, it's a job that, in a distributed fashion, randomly shuffles the order of the rows or instances in the data set that was being processed. So in some cases, it's advantageous to do this random shuffling. There are certain classifiers which this is beneficial for. Naive Bayes isn't one of them. It's not affected by the order of the instances in the data set that it learns from. However, other classifiers like trees and rules can be. In the worst case, we might end up with a partition of our Spark RDD where certain class values aren't represented at all, if the data has perhaps been collected in some systematic way. So for that reason, it can be beneficial to randomly shuffle the order of the instances before learning a classifier like a rule set or a decision tree. Before we finish today's lesson, let's take a look at one more of the example templates that come with Distributed Worker. We'll take a look at the one that cross-validates two classifiers. So this runs an evaluation across validation inside of Distributed Worker. So if we load this one, and I make it a little larger here, we can see that apart from the ARF header Spark job, and the randomly shuffled data spark job, we now can see two components called the Weka classifier evaluator, or evaluation, I should say, spark job. So these are job entries that will perform a cross validation out in Spark for us. There are two entries here, two Weka classifier evaluation spark job entries, because we're comparing two classifiers under cross validation. So we're comparing the naive base classifier again, and in this case, uh, the random forest classifier. So both of these will be evaluated under class validation inside of Spark. So let's run the flow and see what happens. Switch to the log, we can watch some activity. This will take a little bit longer than the previous job as we're running tenfold cross validation. Let's take a look at the results in the text viewer here. Okay, we got two entries, one for naive base, which is this first one here, and the second one is for the random forest classifier. As we can see in the textual output, the results look exactly the same as if you were to run a cross-validation in desktop worker, and similarly for the random forest classifier. So let's consider how distributed Weka performs a cross validation. It actually involves two separate phases or passes over the data. Phase one involves model construction and phase two involves model evaluation. So if we consider a simple threefold cross validation, we know that the data set gets split up into three distinct chunks during this process and that models are created by training on two out of the three folds. So we end up with actually three models created, each of them trained on two thirds of the data, and then we test them on the fold that was held out during the training process. In this example, our data set in Spark is made up of two logical partitions. We can think of each of these partitions as containing part of each cross-validation fold. In this case, they would hold exactly half of each cross-validation fold because we have two partitions. Each partition, as we know, is processed by a worker or a map task. In the model building phase, the workers will build partial models. So yeah, there will be a model inside of a worker that is created for one of the training splits of this cross-validation. So it will be a partial model. So for example, we'll have the first model created on folds two and three, or parts of folds two and three. Similarly, model two will be created on fold one and three, and model three on fold one and two. In each of these workers, these models are partial models because they've only seen part of the data from those particular folds. In our example here, the map tasks will output a total of six partial models two for each training split 
of the cross-validation. So this allows us to get parallelism involved in the reduce phase. So we can run as many reduce tasks as there are models to be aggregated. Each reducer will have the goal of aggregating one of the models. So in our example here, the six partial models are aggregated to the three final models that you would expect from a threefold cross-validation. The second phase of cross-validation is somewhat simpler than the first. It takes the models learned from the first phase and applies them to the holdout folds of our cross-validation in each of the logical partitions of our data set. So it uses them to evaluate each of those holdout folds. The reduce task then takes all of the partial evaluation results coming out of the map tasks and aggregates them to one final full evaluation result, which is then written out to the file system. Over the last couple of lessons, we've looked at some of the example knowledge flow templates that come with distributed Weka. So we've looked at one that creates off metadata and summary statistics for a data set. We've looked at how distributed Weka builds models and how it performs cross-validation. The next lesson will wrap things up and leave you with some directions for what to look at next with respect to distributed Weka.